Hi, if you don't know me, my name is Melba and I love to grow as much as I can in food and flowers in my tiny urban backyard. There's so many ways to create privacy in a small urban garden, but it is okay to create privacy, but you want it to feel cozy and really inviting for yourself and give you a little bit of privacy that feels comfortable enough for you to hang around in your backyard doing what you love, but know how to do it. I will show you how I define spaces to be able to create little living rooms. So I chose the right trees, the right locations, even did some evergreens that grew really, really fast. Used trellises and a vine that I absolutely love. And the neighbor that's on top of me, I get a ton of privacy from them. So stick around if you want to watch it and learn more about creating privacy in your urban backyard. This is how my space looked. It was completely open and my neighbors could see everything that was happening outside and inside of our home. But I started by defining the space. I knew I wanted a super cozy area to hang out, garden and meditate. And I knew that I needed to break it into small little areas to contain them and have a little more privacy from the neighbors. Some other ways that you can do it is create different little living rooms you can think of. Here I created a seating area that's right outside of my door and I can have a pretty nice environment there even if it's not 100% private. I use the umbrella but I also use other strategies to create this small space. Right next to it I have another space that I call my meditation area and my kitchen garden. So they're broken into spaces so that it doesn't feel so daunting to have to get privacy by having a big line of trees just create a barrier between you and the neighbor. Sometimes it just takes those smaller spaces to make it feel more intimate and comfortable for you. I know it feels like a lot of work when you're starting, but plan it really well because if you plan what you're going to be ending up with, then you know exactly what are the spots that need the most barrier between you and that one neighbor. A whole wall doesn't need privacy. You just have to pick key points in your plan and in your backyard to create a sort of barrier that feels enough of it that you feel comfortable in the space to do what you love outside. When I'm planning also how I'm going to create privacy, I look also at the interior of my home. What is it that I want to go ahead and put a barrier between the neighbor and myself so that I feel comfortable in my own house? It's not going to be 100%, but it's enough that I just feel okay with the way that it works. One of my favorite ways to go ahead and create that privacy in those little living rooms is to transition them with trellises. So I can have vertical trellises that are panels, round arches, different trellises that you can begin to grow either roses or sown vines that will create that one barrier away from the fence. Don't think of the fence as the only way that you can put something in to create a wall. Use little transitions that will allow you to put maybe some type of greenery on one side and the other to start getting some of the privacy that you wish for. You have to be patient. I know that it's going to take time for things to grow, but at the end it's going to be completely worth it because the space you're going to create is going to feel so nice to you and your family and gatherings from friends. I love everything that we have done and I've enjoyed seeing it grow and how it impacts the space that I'm living in. Vertical panels are a great way to layer if you have different trees behind and have more of that sort of barrier that goes softly into the 
big pine trees or other things that you use. That way it's not so stark and not so obvious that you're trying to block a neighbor. There's a layering effect that makes it super comfortable and easy to the eye. I even use arches where I grow food to go ahead and create some intimate spaces and have a barrier again from my neighbor. The same way that I do it with my roses and other plants, you can do it with food also if you want every single year to grow something different and you are limited in the amount of space you have. Evergreens are definitely one of my favorite ways to create the most privacy because they're so dense and they grow really, really fast. So if you get them, know exactly where to place them and what type to get, I'll go through that with you and you'll make a huge difference in how you create privacy from your neighbor. The first thing we ever planted were those four evergreens and they were strategically placed because when we step out of the house it's higher than the patio so we wanted privacy right in that location and they have worked great they grow so quickly and they make a beautiful wall i think they're easy to maintain and have been really rewarding and given us enough privacy that we feel super comfortable hanging out in our patio Another way to use this evergreen is also placing it on either side of your arches. If you're growing roses, you can also have them on either side to create even more privacy, but not be so obvious about it and add some softness. One of the best ways to go ahead and create privacy in your yard is if you have a tiny yard, learn exactly where to place your trees and what type of trees to use. Planting a tree just anywhere in your yard and having it take over doesn't create privacy. It just kills the space that you have, which is pretty precious if it's small. So I'll show you exactly the ones that I have used and really love so far. Do some research on the type of Japanese maple trees that you use. They can grow up to 25 feet, so be sure that you get one that maybe grows 10 to 12 feet. And place your trees in the corner of your lot. Don't place them right in the middle where they're going to take over the space. I love placing it on the corner and having something that has that red color. So it has a lot of depth and more of an intimate feel to the space also. Adding things in the corner, you can take all of the limbs that are on the bottom of the tree to make it be more of a canopy and then add clematises and trellises to add a layering effect like I keep mentioning. That makes a huge difference on how things feel and it adds a little bit of privacy because it goes beyond the fence line. This is the tricolor beech tree, and this was a mistake for me to plant. It's gonna grow 20, 30 feet. I keep cutting it back, I cut the lower limbs, and I keep cutting branches. It can grow pretty wide, but because I have it in the corner, half of it will grow into other people's yard and give them privacy. But for now, I'm keeping it, so do your research before you buy your tree. Flowering trees are my favorite. This is an elderberry, a black lace elderberry, and it is edible. You can eat the berries from it, but the flowers are so beautiful in late spring to summer. It does take full sun, or you can do partial shade, but I think it probably does better in full sun. It brings so much movement, but it gives you privacy from your neighbors, but in a very soft way. I love trees that grow where they have some movement because it adds sort of this peaceful feel to your garden. Be aware that in this tree does require maintenance. You have to prune it or remove limbs that you don't want to grow so that they don't start falling because they're a little bit softer off a branch. So make sure that you Keep that in mind if selecting this tree to use in your garden. Another one that I love are hydrangeas. The height of them are a little higher than your fence and they look absolutely beautiful and add a bunch of privacy in little key areas of your garden. This is probably my favorite vine to grow and create an enormous amount of privacy you can see that my neighbor is right on top of me on the left side but this vine 
has just brought the creative out of me because I decided to make it into a tree. I added a trellis and I talk a lot more about this in another video I'll link below. But this is a really great way to create shade in the garden, privacy. It does take some maintenance, but it's absolutely stunning. This is a Japanese snowbill tree and it does grow 20 to 30 feet high. So you have to trim the side branches that grow if you want to keep it in a narrow space like I am. So it will take maintenance, but it flowers for a very short amount of time. These beautiful little flowers that the wildlife and pollinators love. Remember to keep adding things that add depth to your garden and to research because I have made mistakes getting things that grow too large. But if you add the right things, you are going to have an intimate, beautiful and welcoming garden that will provide you with the comfort that you are looking for.